Hey everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atut here, and I am so excited to be catching up with Session Moth Martina. Hello. Hey, hey I've missed you. <laughs> I've missed you too. It's been way too long since I've seen you. I think the last time I actually saw you in person was like last Mania week, which is so sad. <laughs> I know, it was like a full year ago now. It just makes me think about how sad we're all missing it this year now. I know. I was going to ask, I mean, how have you been? How are you coping with everything? Have you been under quarantine? Like, fill me in on the last few days. Yeah, well, because, like, nothing had really, like, shit hadn't really hit the fan by the time I was got on my way to Vegas for Ring of Honor. And I saw, like, things in Ireland were getting kind of worse. Uh, because, like, I remember my home promotion had, like, a really big show. And right as I was in the air, they had to cancel it for the weekend. And I was like, oh, man, that's like things are getting bad. And But like when I was flying, I was on my way to Ring of Honor. Once I got my connection flight, everything was fine. Everything was still go ahead. And then I got on my flight to Vegas, fell asleep, woke up, added, like got onto the Wi-Fi. Everything had gone. It was just like, like my phone flooded with messages saying like the whole thing was canceled. And uh, yeah, it was just so devastating. And then obviously I was like in Vegas for a few days, but it wasn't like too bad at that point so we kind of just like tried to make the most of it do a few videos just you know kind of hang out and have a bit of fun you know what I mean just like try and then but I remember I got my flight changed to come home early just because like things were getting worse so then I got home with no trouble thank god but like once I got home like everyone was like oh you have to like I had to like quarantine for like two weeks because I've been in an airport so I've pretty much just been in my room aside from like going for a walk for the last like two weeks now so, but like, it's kind of the same, like everyone here has to just stay indoors as much as possible. I mean, you're such a partier, even right now, I know you're drinking beer out of like literally a teacup, a coffee cup. So, I mean, how are you coping yeah, with not being out? <laughs> right. <laughs> but how are you coping with not being out, making little babies and beautiful kids with all the people that fancy you? <laughs> I know. I feel worse for the rest of the world because they're being denied all the people that fancy me. But uh, I'm trying to like stay active on social media at the most just because I, I can't physically see all these people I think that's the worst part about it all it's just more the like you don't know how long it's gonna last you don't know when it's gonna you're gonna see people again like as far as I know now like most shows have been cancelled for the next two months and like no flights I don't think are running for two months or anything like that so it's kind of like the most you can do is just kind of like interact with your fans on on like Twitter and stuff like that so I'm trying to like have a laugh on Twitter try and like keep not like <laughs> just oh, a bit anti you know just try and have a laugh at it like try and make people joke and not feel as miserable as you could be feeling in this situation like it'd be so easy to like sit down and just think like oh my god two months without seeing any of my friends without doing shows without like anything like that and just get really upset about it instead you just have to kind of okay what can I do today to try and like make today a good day you know what I mean with so limited opportunities you know what I mean so that's just how yeah everyone has to do it now at this point yeah absolutely I mean one of the benefits like you mentioned it is social media so you can still have everybody fancying you on there um but when it does come to it I mean it really it really does seem like everybody fancies Martina I'm just wondering like how do you get that luster because I wish I had a bit of that like how does one have everyone fancy them I just I I can't get it I mean it's amazing (laughs) I fancy you but uh oh. I fancy you as well though so <laughs> uh, no, I think I was just born with it you know what I mean it, it's kind of hard like people underestimate like it's kind of hard having everyone in the world fancy you and then oh. you only fancy one person in return John Cena yeah <laughs> that's, that's a given has it always been a thing with him like since you were younger or, like he is the one person that I just adore <laughs> uh I don't even think, like, he wasn't even, like, one of the things, like, I would never even be crazy about him at wrestling, I don't know, I think it was his Instagram, do you ever see his Instagram posts, and they're just, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> the most random things, and I was like, I love that, <laughs> I was just like, that's cool, that's, like, funny, and then I just kind of got obsessed with them, and then, like, it just kind of grew, I think the whole thing was just, like, I always, like, had a thing, like, oh, I love John Cena, and then he started following everyone on Twitter, and it was like, he refused to follow me, I remember it's there was one day case. he followed, like, he like he followed like 20 people like people were tweeting me like 20 people like in my circle and I'm talking like 
wrestlers like from like AEW, Ring of Honor, uh, WWE. And I was just like, okay, he's like purposely leaving me out. Like, I think he's playing with me now, even though it's probably not even him on his social media. But I was like, no, I'm not letting him get away with this. This is not, <laughs> I'm going to harass him until he follows me. And then I'll never forget like when he actually did, because um, what was it? Uh, I was on my way to training and the Ring of Honor, like the fact that I'd signed with Ring of Honor had leaked. Um, it wasn't like meant to come out yet because I was waiting on my visa, uh, but somehow it got like out online. And I remember like loads of people were like tweeting me, being like, "Oh my god, Sashmat's going to Ring of Honor!" And I was like, "I can't really like retweet anything like that. I can't like say it until it's like fact or whatever." And uh, so in between all that, I just like my phone was blowing up, and I just saw like John Cena had followed you. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" And I like, started screaming in training, just running up and down the ring. And I just, I was like, what a day, eh? Because like, everyone knew the Ring of Honor stuff, but I wasn't allowed to say it. So I was like, but, like, but John Cena followed me. So that's the real yeah. amazing part of the day. <laughs> that's the real breaking news here, guys. But let's, let's talk I a mean, little yeah, bit. I mean, yeah, I was going to go to Ring of Honor, but like, did you know John Cena followed me? <laughs> no follow? <laughs> I mean, let's talk about Ring of Honor a little bit. You're repping the brand right now. I see it there. Um, yeah, well, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> That's really big, especially coming from where you're from, signing with them, being the first female from there too. Like, this is really big. So how exciting was it for you when that finalization came through and you're like, oh my gosh, I just signed a contract? <laughs> I know, man. Like, it was such, like last year was such a weird year, like in that regard, because obviously I I remember I'd like done so much and I'd like, I'd done the mania week last week and that I really feel like that made me like blow up just because I did so many shows last um last we're everywhere time. yeah <laughs> and it was so good it was like literally my favorite point in wrestling it was it was amazing so I just remember like being on a really good run and then I was like going to Australia and I was like I'm going to Australia from Ireland like the first person to go to Australia from Ireland I was just like this is I'm literally traveling the world right now I've been to Japan America now and now Australia I was like this is so good I remember I was leaving Australia when I got like an email about a WWE tryout. I was like, oh my God, like this is crazy. Like I just never thought I'd get a WWE tryout either. Cause I was like with my character and everything like that, I always just kind of settled on the fact I was like, I'm not exactly PG. <laughs> so I was like, when I got that, I was quite shocked and I kind of like instantly was like, oh, I don't know about this. Like, cause of my character. I was like, we'll see, we'll see. So I went to the tryout. It was great. Blah, blah, blah. And in between that, I kind of had started talking to Ring of Honor as well. And uh, it kind of came to a head. I literally remember getting the emails with the offers on the same day. <laughs> like, I got a, like an email from WWE and an email from uh, Ring of Honor being like, oh, we want to talk to you tomorrow about uh, a contract. I was like, fuck. <laughs> and they were like two hours. The calls were like two hours in between each other. So I was like, this is a big day. I have like yeah. a lot of decisions to make. And then it was just kind of like weighing up all my options and seeing what would be best for me and what I was, because like I said, I was really enjoying what I was doing on the indies uh, at that point. Like I'd really just come into a groove and like everything was just so exciting and fun. So I think that's like a major reason why I kind of picked Ring of Honor, as well as like the fact of like being the first girl from Europe signed, first person from Ireland, like it's groundbreaking. It's doing something nobody else has done. Uh, just kind of like, not following what everybody else is doing and it just kind of like where I wanted to see my product go and where I thought my character would kind of shine the best do you know what I mean and uh yeah so then obviously like I the visa took ages that was the only thing like that so, so it was like the news had like broken and it was like oh okay and then by the time my visa was like ready to go I was in Japan and I was in the middle of a three-month tour so it was like oh I can't even do the visa till I get back in January and um, so then I got back in January yeah so it was like I had to wait so long anyway and I was like so worried like what if it takes longer than my debut is meant to happen and blah 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 but then I remember when I got home the first thing I did like I literally landed from Japan got <laughs> home at like 9 a.m in the morning after not sleeping and just started filling it all out booked my appointment got it and then as soon as I got it like that was like okay it's happening probably I'd say that was probably one of the greatest feelings of my life just being like after all the years you put into it and you're just like you don't see yourself there ever especially because your character I never thought like a major company would kind of come after me I always thought it was going to be just like indies and even the fact that I'd gone to America Australia all this stuff was so Huge unbelievable things. to me yeah and then I, but I was like okay well if I don't get any of the this I'll get like I, I still have all that 
And then with that, I was just like, oh my God, like I'm actually a professional wrestler now. <laughs> you know, and you kind of feel like, oh my God, I'm actually like, I'm actually doing it. Like it's, it's real. <laughs> it's a job now. <laughs> Well, congratulations once again. I remember seeing it come out and I was like, oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and now you have somewhere to bring some dishonor to. So, I mean, it's perfect. It's about time. I think Ring of Honor has been too honorable for too long. So I think they, they, did, they need a bit of a rough scrub, I think. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see because it is such a um, technical company, uh, like, the best wrestling on the planet and everything like that which I'm very excited to actually show like because I train very hard so I'm and like in the indies I've kind of done a progression of Martina where it's like I started off not doing much wrestling at all and it would all just be character 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 but over the years add more wrestling into it to show that you can wrestle so now at Ring of Honor I want to kind of do a mix like show a good bit of character but also show how hard I've been working in training and all that stuff so I like, actually going to wrestle as much as I can as well. <laughs> that sounds like a good balance. <laughs> now, <laughs> you're, drink you're, beer. you're like, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, what else is there to do but drink beer and wrestle? So I'm okay with it. <laughs> well, one thing I need to bring up with you, because it's the first thing you really notice when anybody looks at you is your signature style, even an homage to the animal print. I was like, okay, I got to rep a little here. I wore it in my bobby pins. I was like, let's, let's channel a little bit of Martina today. So yeah, when did your session with animal prints come to be <laughs> okay so I remember like uh when I started doing the gimmick like I have been wrestling for like nine years but for like four of those years I was just doing like Kazaji which was just like your run-of-the-mill female baby face wrestler you know no character just like come on cheer for me <laughs> um but then OTT started and uh which in Ireland was like just this blow up of like almost attitude era style wrestling you know it was like wrestling for adults not for kids and uh we had our first show and I was Kaza G on that and I remember like the electricity in the air was just so insane that I was like no I need something else need like a hook something different and like there was these guys that were doing a gimmick called lads from the flats so they wore like tracksuits and stuff so I was talking to my trainer and he was like oh how about we like put you with them and I was like oh that's great like I was like, oh I'll call myself a session mop because that's like a popular term in Ireland for girls that hang around with lads and like just party all the time and drink all the time. So I was like, okay, I'll call myself a session mop. And on the morning of the show, I was going to just wear like, I knew I was going to wear pajamas because that's what session mops do. They just wear pajamas to house parties. <laughs> you know, they don't dress up. They're not bothered with how they look. They just want to drink. So in the morning, I just went to the shop so I was like, right, I'll get a good pair of pajamas. And there was leopard print there. I was like, oh, that's perfect. I'll wear leopard print and big hoop earrings, you know, have a can in one hand, a cigarette in the other, have my hair up in a big bun, just look an absolute mess. And the fact that I just stumbled on leopard print, I was just like, it's so tacky that I love it. <laughs> I think it's so perfect. You know, the funny thing is leopard print started coming like back into style right after that. And I was like, I'm good. I have yeah. lots of options now. This is great. <laughs> so yeah, like, I now I'll always all my gear even like the colorful ones I have I try to just keep the leopard prints you know leopard print color on it always just like I like it to be my signature <laughs> no, I definitely associate it with you so I feel like it's something you have to keep like it almost is one of those things that defines you you know what I mean like <laughs> so that's the thing. when people see leopard print like they're like oh Martina I'm like yes that's what I want you want to have a look you want to have something that like when people see it they think about you you know what I mean it just makes it's that thing that stands out no, absolutely. Well, I just want to say I'm so happy about all the things that are going on for you right now. I can't wait until all this, you know, craziness blows over and you finally get to come back and I'll see you in person. Yeah. Um, so just thank you I so much that, for I hope to have an interview in person again. I really want to see you. I really hope like some sort of like mania week sort of thing gets arranged for like the end of the year. I think that would be great. Like if um whatever big pay-per-view there is at the end of the year, if just like all the indies again and just like we missed it. We missed it in April. Let's like just do it in like September or like August or something. And we all everyone can just get together. That's the best part of Mania Week is just literally you see everyone. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's like you'll see people you literally haven't seen in years. And it's just like no time has passed. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Yeah, it's the best. It's the, I'm like, it's just oh, it's so sad to think we were meant to be there next week. Like, oh. well, we'll kind of put the sadness aside. The and I just want to say. Yeah, the year. We'll have it. We'll have it. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for coming on here, for catching up. It's always lovely. Um, everybody, this has been Session Moth Martina. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. And we'll see you next time. Bye.